Namo Buddhaya, welcome. This is Abhinav Gulecha and today uh, my video is on a question that I asked in a forum, uh, dhammaveed.com uh, on the question of uh, whether there is a need for a personal instruction from a teacher in, uh, in our uh, study of the dharma. Right? So why my question was there because where I live, uh, uh, I live in Indore in India and uh, there are no close by temples, Buddhist temples. Uh, or some uh, monasteries. So the monasteries that are there are situated in, you know, far I think Ladakh or Arunachal Pradesh or mainly places like Sarnath or um, uh, Arunachal Pradesh or uh, Sarnath or Bodh Gaya. And those monasteries are located there. So my question was, is there a need for you know having a one-to-one -one instruction from a teacher at 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 any step in in one's uh, learning journey? Right, so I got a lot of good responses, and uh, so this video, this video is basically just on the on the perspectives that I got on on that question that I asked. So I've made a few points. I'll cover them. So one perspective uh, was that see this personal one-to-one -one interaction, nothing can beat that, right? But this need of a personal instruction and you know a one-to-one -one kind of an instruction that was definitely required in the pre-information age where there were no, you know, online sources of, you know, uh, st uh, studying about Buddha's teachings or uh, there were no books, courses, nothing was there. So there, there the, the medium for reliance for, of Buddha's teachings was through one-to-one -one instruction only, oral instruction by the teacher to the student. But now in the age that we are living in, we have the access online to a lot of, you know, various sources of uh, Buddhist instruction. The Buddha's sources are very easily available. Uh, you can check on websites like access to insight.org or suttacentral.net. A uh, lot of websites are there which gives the access to the translations of Buddha's teachings in various languages, including English. So that access is there. The teachers, a lot of big, uh, uh, very well known teachers like Bhikkhu Bodhi or Jack Confield, or a lot of teachers are available online. Their courses, their talks are available on YouTube. So all those resources are available. Lot of books are available which you can directly purchase through Amazon. And, and if you talk about books, then there are so many free e-books e that are available. Now, I am so, so for, I consider myself so fortunate to be on the path of the Dhamma that so many, so much of knowledge is available for free in form of e-books and everything. And, and I mean, gratitude to all those people who have done this work and they have made it so freely available that even if you are having limited means, you can study. So it's basically a pre-information age versus information age where we have all the information. We have to just be resourceful and skillful enough so that we can take the right information for our learning. Right? We, we have to keep the learning of Buddha's teachings as our goal, as our primary goal. And then accordingly, if we have that intention in our mind, then we can easily access the resources, they are available very easy, right? So that was one perspective uh, that was there. So, so the thing was need to, needing to be resourceful, you just need a laptop and an internet connection, dedicated time and a strong intent to learn, uh, intent and inclination towards Buddha's teachings, only that is needed. Uh, one view that I also came across was that learn from the Buddha directly, right? There, all others, all else are interpretations. So even you come across a book by a very famous and learned author, uh, again that is an interpretation of Buddha's teachings. Learn from the Buddha directly, which means go and read the Buddha's sutras, the discourses that are there, right? So which I am doing now, it's my practice and which I am sharing my learnings through my YouTube channel. But again, what I am sharing is my perspective of my learnings of the teachings. So it's best. Uh, to view, to learn from the Buddha directly through the discourse in the sutras and as your, uh, you know, maturity and consciousness level is, you will get new, new meanings as your consciousness level expands. So that is another view that I came across. Instead of kind of a teacher, go, looking for a teacher, start reading the sutras, right, learn from the Buddha directly. So here my view on this particular uh, way is that first rather than attacking the, <laughs> attacking is not the right word, but rather than, you know, tackling the sutras, which is very difficult for a lay person to do initially, 
Initially, you can read books like Fundamentals of Buddhism by Peter Santina and other books. You can see my detailed video on Beginner's Guide to Buddha's Teachings, where I have given a, 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 a guidance on how you can start reading the, uh, the, how you can start getting a grasp of the core teachings like Four Noble Truths, Noble Eightfold Path, Three Marks of Existence, right? Five Precepts, Five Remembrances, Five Hindrances, all these basic things. It's not basic, it's actually the core. But once you get a hold on that core, then you can move towards the reading of the sutras. Then there is another video that I have made on how to read the benefits of reading Buddha's discourses and how to read the discourses. So you can check those videos where I have explained step by step how you should go. Like you can start with reading the Dhammapada first and then move to the uh, discourses. Right? So you can check those videos. Right? Okay. Now, once you are on the path, on your learning path, uh, and you start reading the sutras, the questions may arise, right? There are questions that may arise from your study and from your practice of the meditations that you do and everything. Now, the, the uh, perspective that I got was that take the Sangha as your, as your teacher. The Sangha is the body of people uh, who are learned people, learned and lay people, monks and lay friends who are on the path. So in that Sangha, there are many experienced practitioners who are practicing like from 20, 25, 30 years of the Buddha's teachings. So they have a lot of experience and then they can help you, right? So learn from the teachers and the experienced friends on the path. And there someone had actually given also a quote, which the Buddha said. So I'm just re re uh, verbally saying this quote, quoting this. Uh, the Buddha said, it may be Ananda. Ananda was a disciple of the Buddha that in, that in some of you, the thought may arise that the word of the master is ended. We have a teacher no more, but it is not thus Ananda that you should regard it. That means you should not think like that. The doctrine and the rules of the order which I have set forth and laid down for you all, let them, after I am gone, be the teacher to you. So Buddha is saying that the doctrine that I have led, so basically the view that was coming was that Buddha, when he died, he actually left the Sangha as his successor. Buddha did not name any one person as his successor. Buddha named the Sangha, the Sangha to carry the teachings forward. So, and this view also comes, resonates very well with the view that was expressed by Thich Nhat Hanh, the Zen Buddhist monk, a uh, very revered Zen Buddhist monk who says that uh, the Sangha is the living Buddha. Sangha, the people who are practicing, you and me, we are the living Buddha, right? We carry the legacy of the Buddha. So we can all learn from so each other. So how to learn from each other is that there are forums like dhammaveer.com from where this discussion happened and I am quoting that. So you can learn, you can register on that forum. Then there are like suttacenter.net. They have a sutta center uh, forum. So there are many, many Buddhist uh, forums that are available where people come together and they share their learnings with each other. There are forums that are available on Facebook also. So a lot of forums are available. You can join a couple of one, two forums and then start posting your queries from your learning, from your study on that forum and gather the inputs from, uh, gather the inputs and perspectives. One very helpful thing is that rather than having only a one teacher, uh, so either you get a really, really wise and intelligent teacher and, you know, but the problem is that it's very difficult to find such a teacher, right? So, Either you, if you get a very wise and intelligent teacher who is free from the defilements, who is sincerely pursuing the path of the dharma, then nothing like it. Then, then your search is ended. But if you cannot, like I have not, so better to rely on the perspectives of, you know, multiple people, right? There is definitely a scope for confusion there. But the better thing is that if you have multiple perspectives, you will have a more kind of a well-rounded idea on the particular issue rather than only that one person telling you to do this and that right because that one person uh, you know not all teachers also you can rely so if you find a teacher who is like who has certain fixed views on some things or who is kind of sectarian or kind of a rigid then he will kind of you know view it from only that lens and give you that instruction which may not be the actual teaching of the buddha so uh, as compared to that if you post the question to a forum or something where you get a lot of views then it is upon you to choose which view you resonate with, with yourself the best at this time and then you can proceed. Understand one thing and this is from my experience I am telling is that you can only learn 
from from the level of the consciousness consciousness that you have right now right so when we study buddha's teachings we cannot go we cannot go expect to go beyond our current level of consciousness so uh, side by side when we are studies when, when we are doing the, our study of the buddhist scriptures side by side we have to do our meditation and train our mind evolve ourselves so that from that higher consciousness level we can assimilate more knowledge right okay and yes the last thing is that see uh, you can also travel to retreats this see if you have the financial means to travel to retreats and you know financial means for travel see mostly if you go in the retreats uh, 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 mostly the non profit ones they do not we have very less charges um, and if you can if you travel to monasteries then if you go in off season time then you can also go and stay very reasonable donation you uh, you need to pay there you you know a basic food and accommodation thing is also taken care of right if so if you can travel and visit the monasteries then nothing like that so uh, so uh, it's highly advised that one uh, at least travels to the four uh, key sites the four sacred sites that buddha has said uh, which is uh, the uh, the birthplace in nepal uh, uh, lumbini then um, uh, sarnath where he got uh, buddha got the enlightenment then kushinagar and uh, uh, kushinagar is the third place and fourth place i am just because of this video i am making i am not able to and both gave which is both gave which is where he got the enlightenment sarnath where he gave the first sermon so these four places we should visit uh, i am visiting sarnath uh, uh, in in this week so i will come back with my learnings from sarnath i will be discussing if i get the opportunity to discuss with with uh, uh, with some in some monasteries if i find some monks whom i can discuss i will definitely share the learnings here also so if you get the opportunity to travel to these places and interact with monks or uh, or get associate with the buddhist temple then nothing like it right so that also one should keep in the agenda that at least to travel these four sites and get the uh, try if uh, one can resolve the doubts uh, uh, from the monks uh, but the important thing is and which is the summary of this particular video is that uh, if you get a wise teacher nothing like that but let not the non availability of a personal one to one kind of an interaction stop you from taking the dhamma path if you have come till now on this on, on this if maybe if you are reading if you are watching this video till now let not this opportunity go go uh, in your lifetime just take hold of this opportunity there is no better uh, karma than reading the dharma listening the dharma and and spreading the dharma right and following the practice studying the dharma practicing the dharma and if you feel inclined spreading the dharma so let let not the no the uh, non availability of a teacher direct one to one interaction with the teacher stop you stay on course take the first step see remember one thing if you take the first step there are a lot of higher dhamma forces right invisible dharma dhamma forces buddhas and the bodhisattvas they are helping you if you take that first step so have that strong intention you can also express an intention to the buddhas and the bodhisattvas to please help me in my learning journey but do stay on course in the journey journey learning journey and we have the sangha we have spiritual friends you me we are all spiritual friends to help each other on the path uh, so stay on course i hope this video gave you some inputs on this particular question if you had one do share your thoughts your comments in the feedback uh, in the comment section um, thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya